Hi everybody. Today's topic, how does neuropathy impact people at work? Andrea Carvin here at Inner Sparks Rehab Gym and Spa. We're growing healthy, high-performing bodies, midlife and beyond is our highest priority. So what happens and how does neuropathy start to evolve? It's kind of a complex system, but at some point, most of us realize that our body doesn't actually run on autopilot. I don't know if that starts happening in our 30s, 40s, <laughs> 50s, but at some point, all that we often take for granted, we start to realize, uh-oh, you know, we need to learn more about how to take care of um, our body. So we choose a type of work we do and we hopefully love what we do and then the challenge becomes doing it day in and day out where we're moving so some people um, have very repetitive movements and repetitive focus and repetitive thoughts in their jobs and these are both positive and have a downsize we get very good at things when we do lots and lots of repetition and there's a point where we also need to move our bodies in other ways so that the body itself, our body can stay healthy. Um, so let me give you examples of what I'm talking about. A musician, an athlete, an artist, there's repetitive movements that, skills that have to be learned in order to do a you know, effective job at those careers. Um, we bring focus in when we start to develop a craft in careers, and we may have more movement involved in athletics, musicians, or um, people who are doing a lot of uh, physical work. And then we might have people who do more desk work, more thinking stuff, like lawyers and scientists and professors and technology experts. And you get what I'm saying, that different jobs require different movements. And that influences how your body organizes and how you grow. So what tends to happen, let's say you're sitting at a computer and that's your primary job. What can happen if we're not training our body well so that we can meet the demands of the job that our body gets tired from the repetitive movements and slowly our posture develops and then we get forward neck and our hips start to turn and hamstrings get tight and before we know it we're not walking really well so that's one example that over the years and when we start to do this our spine, our, um, you know, the muscles, the alignment, things go off, and that's where neuropathies can start to happen. So like a craftsman who might be hammering at somebody or turning something, and even though we have lots of great tools to try to take some of the stress off hands and backs nowadays, over time, that can wear parts of our body out, air quality, um, vibration, a lot of repetitive force. And it also depends on we're more likely to get hurt on days we don't eat as well. And that's been shown because we're a little more tired. We may use our head and say, I got to get this done rather than listening to our body, which says, hey, you got to rejuvenate or go a little easier on me today. So um, another example would be like dancers. Um, dancers learn movement and have a lot of stress around that because they're working for such long hours to perform, to produce under time. And that's how it's important to also consider our work culture because culture impacts people's risks for health problems and particularly with movement potential neuropathies. Here's how it goes. We increase cortisol, we increase adrenaline from stress, and that creates increased tension in some of the muscle patterns, so our muscles, and we can collapse the tension in our back because we're holding more muscle um, tension. And when we don't wanna be somewhere, our body creates cortisol and adrenaline to say, get out of here, <laughs> go move. And when you can't do that, so you kind of start working against your body and that's that's where we can develop really good training body habits to counter that. So um, when 
people start to notice they're having a neuropathy and again it could be from an injury it could be from a chronic repetitive movement pattern it could be from chemical imbalances which we've talked about on other videos um, often the advice is to go exercise and exercise is healthy but how do you know what kind of exercise is good for your body especially if you're doing a very physically demanding job and that's again where I see and I think a lot of uh, trainers see problems because people go to the gyms and use exercise equipment that may be doing the opposite of what your body actually needs because one size does not fit all for exercise um, I'll give you a great example of how well we know this. I was at a talk uh, by an astronaut a number of uh, weeks ago, maybe it was in March, and this um, NASA astronaut was explaining to us how the scientist had to figure out a way to keep his body toned and able to perform in space. And it wasn't an easy task. They had to look at the right proportion of food, the right amount of oxygen that will keep his metabolism going, when to eat, muscle groups that needed to be worked in order to keep all of these systems pumping because that's a lot of how our body works, and repair time um, for these conditions. So um, all this stuff is taken into consideration for this NASA astronaut who um, was explaining to us some of the body challenges that happen when you go in space. Well, when it comes to neuropathy, really effectively addressing it is kind of the same way. Nerves love oxygen, they need food, they need vitamins, the brain just loves input from the nerves, and that's from our skin, from our joints, from our muscles, and all of these different organ systems of our body have millions of little tiny signaling things called receptors that give our brain information. And there's lots of overlap in our body because the brain and the body, you know, if one thing broke and that stopped us from moving, that wouldn't be very adaptive. You know, when we were in that hunter-gatherer part of our evolution, you need to go hunt and you need to pick berries if you're gonna eat and survive. So there's so much overlap. And so when we look at the body and start to use a neurobiomechanical approach, what we're actually doing is looking at how the body is moving and not just in the little area that might be working. Um, we're looking at the whole body. Where are the eyes? What's the vestibular system saying? What's the skin? What's the input getting here? So um, there's a lot more options to decrease pain, improve movement, um, restore better movement and healthy, enjoyable activities when, again, we don't look at just that little area that has nerves that aren't talking so well to the brain. My husband, I'll leave you with this, is known for a saying that is, if you can't get there from here, start somewhere else. And that is something that I think is really significant for peripheral neuropathy. So I hope this was helpful. Take your health back into your own hands. If you experience work-related neuropathies and you can learn to move better for your body. And that's it until next time. Take care everybody. Bye-bye, have a great day.